I remember him coming in to the caravan I was in at one of the match races because oh, this that guy's boy, uh, my girlfriend's boyfriend's after me, and, I, and he's hiding in the caravan. I'm going, oh, you poor guy. Oh, it must be tough, you know. And he's, oh yeah, just don't say nothing. Kenny Roberts Senior, thank you very much for joining us here at Bennett's Bike Social. It's a real pleasure and an honour to have you okay. on the channel and have you in front of me today. Um, firstly, how are you finding being back in the UK? Are you enjoying being back here and especially in and around this Goodwood paddock? Well, I mean, this is something that's different than anywhere in the world. This paddock and, and what he's done here, uh, you, you, you're never going to see that anywhere else in the world. and so. To, this is probably one of the few events that I would agree uh, to come to. Um, what were your emotions lining up on that line earlier on? Because I got a little bit emotional just stood on this little straight before the bridge next to, next to Wayne this afternoon. What were you feeling? What were your emotions at that time? Well, I never really thought about that whole emotional thing. Um, when he got on the bike in Japan and, and we were able to, to push him off, uh, that just brought tears to my eyes, and 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 I don't know why. It's just I can't explain it. Uh, taking off with him today, it was again like it seems like 35 years has just disappeared. I'm on the bike with Wayne, uh, going up the mountain, and it just seemed like the, all the time that we spent him in a chair just went away. It was like it, it didn't exist. And it's, uh, I don't know, I can't explain it, but it's, I can't explain the emotions that that, and all that we've been through, through world champions and, and bad times and good times, and it just seems uh, gone. And it, all of a sudden I'm riding with Wayne again. It was uh, something I, I won't forget. Did you ever think it'd be possible? especially sort of in the modern era that we're in now where kind of anything's possible really. Did you think it would be possible to, to do that? Not really. I never really thought about it. Uh, Wayne's Wayne and my buddy, so I never, I never thought about it until about five, six years ago, I was in Japan and uh, one of the other riders that were hurt, Aoki, uh, I, he, his uh, brother actually raced for me was testing a Honda with that system and then it was like wow that's that's cool it, a lot of it depends on how high up you are uh, with your injury but I started thinking about it then and when we put the Japanese thing together for him to ride the R1 then I said Goodwood is going to come after you and he's just going no no nobody gives a shit about me he's like dude I'm telling you I will see you at Goodwood. No, no, nobody cares. And here, here we are. Um, that's a, a fantastic answer. I was just amazed by that. Um, it's almost 20 years since the passing of your great rival, Barry Sheen. Um, I was looking at things yesterday. How many years? Almost 20 years. Wow. Um, 20 years next year um, since we lost Barry. Um, he was an absolute legend and a legend in the UK and all over the world, but do you, do you miss him? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we hated each other in a, in a good way, and uh, I couldn't wait to see what he said about me, so I could say something about him. And and, and I, we, I enjoyed it. You know, I don't know if he enjoyed it. I think he did because he he could come out with some crackers. It was much quicker than I was, uh, wit wise, uh, and he could talk better than I can talk. And it, so it was always hard for me. You know, I was always like kind of behind it, and uh, but I enjoyed it and. I mean, sure, you know, it's like a boxer. You, you go in the ring and you hate each other, and then you come out and you're hugging each other and having a beer. So that was me and Barry. And, and now to, to have him here would be twice as good as it is right now. I mean, for me, because we'd still be slagging each other off uh, till we got to the finish line. So it, I, I miss him a lot. What were your best memories of Barry? And it can be on and off the track. 
I would say, well, good, bad, good memories of taking his helmet off at Silverstone was not fun uh, when he had the big crash. But I would say in America, we used to race mini bikes together and, and just pile around in the pits. And then when we got to being Hibbs, the world champion, I was like, I, I came over to do the match races and there's billboards of Barry Sheen and, and we're driving along and, I, and someone said, look, GB on the license plate. Someone said, that's Go Barry. And it's like, God damn, he's on every license plate. And so for, uh, for me, it's like when I met him, he's the same old Barry, you know, slagging people off and, and uh, telling people to get out of his face. It, it was the same old guy. We, the, the memories that we had were mostly you want to forget about because it was after hours. <laughs> it, it, he was a great fun after hours, of course. You're just saying there the after hours stuff. I mean, at the moment we've got the MotoGP Unlimited docu series on Amazon Prime, which sort of goes behind the scenes of everything um, to do with MotoGP. I take it you wouldn't have wanted a MotoGP Unlimited back in your day and back with Barry. If we had the cameras that they have and recording systems that they have now, I'd have never been married. No one would have ever married me. So, uh, yeah, I don't think, especially Barry, because he. He could sneak off to restrooms that nobody even heard of. So, yeah. I remember him coming in to the caravan I was in at one of the match races. Because oh, that guy's boy, uh, my girlfriend's boyfriend's after me. And, I, and he's hiding in the caravan. I'm going, oh, you poor guy. Oh, it must be tough. You know, and he's, oh, yeah, just don't say nothing. I was going, I'm going to go tell him where you're at. So, it was just, he was, uh, before he married Steph, it was uh, pretty fun. Uh, we just recently asked Wayne this question, and I'm interested to see what your response is to this. Um, out of everything that you've got in your life and everything that you've got at home, what's the most prized possession that you have at home or in a warehouse or anything from your racing career? And it can be anything. It can be a bike, set of leathers, helmet. Uh, probably, so, probably a letter a congratulation letter when I retired from uh, the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, the real president. So that, that was uh, pretty special for me. And of course, I, I received it at a, a Yamaha um, trade show that I had to do, a presentation for Yamaha. And somebody hands me that, checking in. And I looked at it and I watered it up and threw it in the trash. And someone who knew about it said what are you doing that's from the president i said he didn't sign it he goes you can't sign a telex dummy so that's how it all started and I straightened it all out and put it in my uh, office still there fantastic um you've just been talking about them there and i was talking about them actually yesterday to my dad who remembers a lot about them the match races the transatlantic uh -huh. trophy um what were your best memories from that because from the little videos that i watched last night in my hotel on youtube they were pretty they were pretty mega races to be involved in weren't they oh yeah there was a lot happening uh, i remember starting the race at mallory park the second year i was here and uh second lap third lap it helped couldn't see the track and we're on slicks so i'm riding around thinking okay they're going to throw the red flag stop the race no so I went to the clerk of the course, an old guy, he's probably about 107. And I said, why didn't you stop the race? It was a transatlantic troll. We could have put it off for an hour. He said, we don't stop races here, mate. And I went, ah, you call that a race? And I just walked away. And that, that, that started it. And from then on, it was... I was always a bad guy because I thought this is stupid, that's stupid, this is stupid. And uh, the only good part about that is at Olton Park I always crashed, and I, and and I all, and they'd all say, well, you know, that there was gravel where I went. He goes, yeah, well, we don't ride down there. Well, I did, and uh, anyway, I got to know the people that worked in the, in the hospital. So they, oh, Kenny, you're back again. It's like, oh yeah, right. Oh, so that was. That was the memories. It, it was some really hard battling bikes that weren't really ready for that kind of, of riding for me. 
uh, and I was just too stupid to realize that, and I kept crashing. But we wanted to win. I mean, America, you know, we won our share. We didn't win every time, but we won our share. Would you like to see the Transatlantic Trophies races come back in a, in a modern day era? Well, you know, the finances to do something like that now is probably, you know, over the top. It, it would have to be somebody who, who really believed in that. Uh, unfortunately, I think America, America would get their ass kicked now. Uh, it seems like everybody else has stepped the game up except us. So, in some ways, yeah, some ways, no. Which ones of the British tracks from those series is, do you remember the most? And which ones did you think, wow, I, I wish we had this in America? And which one did you think, oh my God, I never want to come here ever again? Mm, Alton Park was probably my, it, it was like a 150 mile an hour motocross uh, with whoop de doos. Uh, it was unbelievable. and it, I squared the corner off one time and high sided it and the, one of the English guys go, we, you can't go up that high there because the tree st stuff falls down on it and it's slippery. But yeah, you know, thanks for telling me now, you know, I wrecked the bike and wrecked my, my body. Uh, I would say Alton Park we don't need. Uh, Mallory Park to me was kind of fun because it had one big sweeping corner and then a an S like a chicane that you had that I wheelie through because of the bumps would make the thing wobble. And people used to say, God, it's so cool. It's like, it's just to miss the bumps. Uh, and, and it had a hairpin that was, for these motorcycles, it was really difficult to get around and, and make that right. Um, so I think that Alton Park is one we don't need, but I like to see something like Mallory. That was, that was a real fun, racetrack for me. BSB don't go to Mallory Park anymore, it's a real shame because it is, a, like you say, a mega circuit. I think the last thing I did actually in Britain was Mallory Park. Um, so just can we talk about your career as a team boss? Um, you've been today riding the, the Proton KR bike up the hill, mega to see. Um, why did you want to become a team boss? Why did you want to do it? Uh, I was interested in uh, the engineering and uh, of course I had a lot of friends at Yamaha and they they asked me to, to start a team. And so that's how it all came about. And I don't know why they wanted me to run a team other than the fact that they were disappointed in something in, in, in their business. And so they, that's how it all started. And then uh, that was with Lucky Strike. And then of course I went on in, in 90 for the, with Marlboro. And don't ask me. I, I just, I just felt that they're running a team was not run properly as being a rider, and I think the engineering aspect of of making a bike better. Forget the rider, because the riders come and go. I needed to make a better motorcycle, and that intrigued me. How did I, I, before I hired Wayne, I did yeah. three days of testing myself with him. So, you know that that. That was uh, late on, 88. How difficult was it to set up a GP team? Because most of our viewers that are going to watch this will never really fully understand how you go about it. So how difficult was it to set it up back in the day? Oh, it's easy back then. You know, we had five mechanics and, and some helpers. Yamaha prepared all the equipment, brought it to the racetrack. We put it in our truck and then we worked on it from then on. They would supply the parts. They have an engineer for me, but we basically started from Yamaha delivering four motorcycles that ran and, and a part kit, and away we went. You put gas and oil in it, you put the tires on it, and hired the riders, and you went racing. The mechanics at that time drove around in a Citron station wagon. So the riders, were either in flying or caravans or motorhomes. So we didn't worry about them. We just worried about the mechanics getting to the track, the bikes were in the truck, done. What do you think of MotoGP at the moment and its current state? What are your thoughts on it? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with MotoGP. Uh, 
people talk about this and talk about that. I, I, can't, I can't see anything wrong with it. I, I don't think I could say anything that would make it better. So I'm happy enough just to watch it like everybody else. I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, I don't want to say disappointed, I'm a little frustrated at, at how the riders, one guy can win the race and next week he's 15. I, I don't understand that and I'm not, I'm not involved enough to know or interested enough to know because nothing I can do about it anyway. But I'm, it, it like freaks me out. What, wait a minute. You know, when I raced, I was always up in the front. If, if I qualified 17th, I don't know, suicide was probably the next step. Uh, so it's, it's really different for me. Why? And, and I talk about with the people that I know in the deal, and they, and they don't know either. It's kind of a mystery. So last question then before we let you get off and enjoy the rest of your day, because I'm sure you're pretty bored to see in my face now. Um, <laughs> Do you still get excited about getting on a bike? Do you, do you still have those same feelings that you did when you, when you were racing, whether it be flat track or GPs or anything like that? Do you still get that same buzz? If I'm, if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna put my knee down, yeah. Yeah, if I'm gonna go and put my knee down and, and have the right tires uh, on the motorcycle, it's still fun. I mean, it's, it brings back a lot of memories. Of course, uh, my, my body's behind my brain, but the problem is the brain still thinks I can do it, you know, but my body's going, no, no, don't do it. But your brain never, my, my brain never shut off. It never went, well, you can't do that. And so that's kind of frustrating because when I go and do something and, and things aren't right or the motorcycle's not running right, then I'm, I should just say, okay, well, never mind. I, I don't, I'm, I'm upset. You know, I wanted to do, when I ride it, I wanted to do what I want it to do. And so if that doesn't happen, uh, that's why I don't do a lot of these events because a lot of times the bikes aren't what I remember them to be. And it disappoints me. And instead of saying, hey, good job, guys, it ran, I go, it, things run like crap. You know, it won't even do a wheelie, it's so slow. And, you know, things like that. So uh, it's difficult for me. Well, Kenny Robert Senior, thank you very much for your time. You're thank welcome. you very much for joining us, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your time well, in the UK. I will, definitely will. Thank you. Thank you.